Hello, everyone. Welcome to my call to the bar ceremony in Middle Temple, London, where new barristers begin their next chapter in the legal profession. It was a glorious day in London, putting on some autumn colours. First thing I had to do was to change into my wig and gown. In comparison to others that we've had, yeah, because yeah. um, sometimes we get it when, as I think last time we had over 90 in a day, which oh, was wow. a lot, so yeah. it's small in comparison. And you were helping all the time, yeah. So, those that have hired, we, we help, so not everybody hires with us, some people oh, yes. buy their own. Um, this, this place is the place to go, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, these are heavy. They will drop back off your shoulders, it's a little to keep pulling forwards. And this just hangs down the front. It does do, this hangs loose, sure, slow fast, so which looks well anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you tying your hair up? I don't know, do I have to? I think you have to for the ceremony, but I know people that have had photos without, yeah. with their hair down first. Yeah. Yeah. And then I I'll wait till the yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you do tie it up, just keep it as low as possible, because yeah. otherwise yeah. this part of the wig just goes a little bit silly at the back. So. Middle Temple is one of the four inns of court for barristers. The inns are the only institutions with the power to call a person to the bar. It's like a professional association with a lifetime membership if you're in. So I didn't actually study my law degrees here, and in this ceremony, I'd be with colleagues from other law schools. I finished my bar professional training course during the pandemic, so the call ceremony had to be done remotely, which wouldn't be the same as in person. I picked this time of year because it's around my mother's birthday, so we'd celebrate both occasions. We were called in the order based on seniority according to our admissions to the inn. I was lucky number seven. It may be a bit strange for some viewers to see so few of us kind of graduating, and that we are all in wigs and gowns. So let me quickly explain. In England and Wales, when law students completed their degrees, they need to choose between the solicitor or the barrister route, but they're separate trainings. Getting qualified as a barrister, for example, won't allow me to practice law as a solicitor. For those who have non-law degrees, they have to do an extra law conversion course. And that's what I did. I had a bachelor degree in biochemistry, followed by three years of PhD in Parkinson's disease research. While I was working as a medical advisor, I did a part-time GDL and then chose the barrister route. This is being transmitted around the world. So it's like the Oscars. There are billions of people who are going to watch this, so no pressure. 
Right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, very warm welcome. I'm delighted to welcome you to the Middle Temple today for this very important event. We're very glad that you've all been able to join us to mark this significant day in our new barristers' lives and to celebrate their achievement in being called to the bar. My name is Guy Perica, and I'm the under treasurer or the chief executive of the Middle Temple. Um, I run the inn on a day to day basis. I'm actually the 39th person to have that role since um, 1524, which tells you something about the age of the inn and its very long history. Speaking of history, this hall, Middle Temple Hall, was begun in 1562, and it's been in use since 1570, pretty much without interruption. It replaced a building of the Knights Templar, and I hope you'll agree it's a very fine example of Elizabethan architecture. It has a long history, uh, but it is absolutely not a historical relic. It's very much a living space and the heart of our inn. It's used by our judges, our barristers, our new practitioners, and of course, our students. They come here for lunches, for dinners, for lectures, performances, social events, and ceremonial events such as today's. Over the centuries, the hall has been the venue for feasts, for dances, for concerts and plays. The first performance of Twelfth Night, uh, Shakespeare's masterpiece, was held here in 1602, and the records show that the great man himself was here that evening. The hall has survived riots, the plague, the English Civil War, which split the inn down the middle between the Cavaliers and the Roundheads. More recently, it's just about survived the pandemic as well. Unlike other areas of the temple, so this estate that we call the temple, it survived the Blitz during the Second World War, but only just. There was a bomb that landed in Middle Temple Lane and blew a hole in this big gable to my right. There are some photographs you can see in the corridors that show the damage. Um, but otherwise, it was restored, and it is pretty much intact from when it was completed back in the late 15th and 16th century. Now, since medieval times, lectures and readings have been delivered from tables such as the one on my right. This particular table, which is a very important part of our uh, heritage, is called the cupboard. Uh, and when our new students come to sign their name in the call book, they should bear in mind that this particular table began its life as part of the Golden Hind, the ship in which Francis Drake sailed around the world in 1577. So don't damage the table, please. Um, now, when you do come to sign your name in the call book, you'll be joining many generations of Middle Templars who've preceded you, not just great lawyers and judges, but people such as Walter Raleigh, Henry Fielding, Charles Dickens, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, Princess Diana, and our current royal bencher, Prince William, who was called in 2009. It's a very rich tradition and a very distinguished line of individuals have come through this hall. And of course, all of the new barristers who are about to be called today have achieved real distinction in their own right. I know that all of you will have shown real dedication to your professional futures at the bar. I'm sure many of you will have juggled jobs and competing commitments to family, friends, work, and study. You, have met, you may have made financial sacrifices, taken on debt, uh, and you will have forgotten probably what it's like to have free time. You may even have forgotten what your family looks like, so this might be a good opportunity to reacquaint yourselves. I'm sure all of those who are here today are very proud of you, uh, and of course, we are extremely proud of you as well. If you haven't done so already, I very much hope you will think of this as your professional home as you develop your careers in the future. Now, just very briefly about what's going to happen in the next few minutes, some of the ind individuals you'll meet. Uh, very shortly, some of our benchers, the masters of the bench, will process into the hall. Uh, they are the people who make up the governing body of the inn. The reader uh, is, uh, as the name suggests, the, the person who used to read out the law lectures in the old days. Today, uh, the reader will read out the name of our students individually as they come up to be called. And they will be then presented to the treasurer, who is effectively our chairman or chairwoman, uh, and, and is in charge of the inn for the year that they are in office. All the various 
coats of arms that you see around in the hall today and in the corridors are the coats of arms of readers and treasurers going back to, I think it's 1598, just around the corner there on my left. Uh, so as I say, when the benches come in, if everybody could stand until you're invited to sit down, the reader will then read names and each student will be um, presented individually for call. Today we have 50 uh, new barristers, three of whom will be attending or are attending online. Student members of the Middle Temple, being called to the degree of the utter bar, you have declared that for as long as you remain a barrister, you will use your knowledge and skills in keeping with the principles and ethics of the profession, uphold the rule of law, and in doing so, comply with the code of conduct and core duties of the Bar of England and Wales. You have also accepted the obligation to follow the regulations of the profession and to undertake continual improvement of your professional knowledge and competence. Master Treasurer, it's my duty and privilege as Master Reader to introduce to you those students of this honorable and learned society whose proposals for call to the degree of the utter bar have been authorized by parliament. When they have been called by you, they will, after the ancient manner, enter their names at the cupboard in the book containing the role of the barristers of this inn. Master Treasurer, I introduce Mo. Dr. Mo, in the name of the masters of the bench, I call you to the degree of the utter bar. There we go. The split second moment when I became a barrister. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And if you'd now like to join with me in congratulating them all. Master Treasurer actually gave a moving speech about how we should use our knowledge to help others. But for the full version of the ceremony, you'll just have to complete the barrister training. Now let's celebrate. I'm innocent. It's gorgeous. <laughs> the teddy bear keychain I have was from the Law Society of Hong Kong, given to me by an old friend. He thought I should be a barrister even before I started studying law. There are a lot of people I have to thank. My parents, close friends, senior barristers who provide guidance, Just when I wanted to congratulate myself, doing things backwards in high heels, I knew that I am truly blessed. I started studying law as a hobby, just curious about how lawyers solve complex issues. Reading law cases was like my bedtime stories.
I wouldn't have taken it this far if it wasn't for James Badenoch, K.C., Dr. Humphrey Coe, who introduced me to the late Professor Michael Wilkinson. They all saw something in me. Middle Temple is gorgeous, and I wish you're all here with me. I really want to rewind, press pause, and soak up the moment. This was the cupboard where I signed my name in the inn's books to become a new barrister. The under treasurer mentioned the Elizabethan Hall. There are also royal portraits. This double hammer beam roof can probably withstand anything, including the blitz. The bar is encouraging gender equality and diversity. Here, exhibiting items from significant female barristers. But this great barrister with an eye patch is still so badass. When you're surrounded by all these legacies, everything so shiny, it is like you've made it in this members-only club. Within it, there's still a hierarchy to fight for the top spot, a clique. Even more exclusive. For me, I just love working. TV dramas make barristers look like cold-blooded robots who would do anything to win. The fact is, I spend most of my time in the library, reading and thinking, trying to understand human behavior. I've received a fair share of education. But I'd never think that I'm better than someone else. My biggest privilege would be to serve others. What do people say? I'm now ready, willing, and able. These archives are great reminders that the legal institution is special, but in a democratic society, people can still challenge it, draw caricatures of the most influential judges of all time. Today. I've shown you the most glamorous side of becoming a barrister. In reality, there's always another side.